Gentlemen, hey, congratulations for boys versus girls. Thank you. Thank you. So hey, you say thank you. <laughs> I I already get a sense where this interview might actually be heading. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the very first question to Michael be, before before things get chaotic. Michael, where did the original idea came from from boys versus girls? I'm actually guessing it's from your camp experiences. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, loosely based on my real camp experience where the camp that I did go to went 70 years with boys and girls separated. And then in 1990, they did go co-ed for the first time. Um, I was 10 years old when that happened. And from what I remember and what I was told, though, is there was only really friction for about a couple of days of the, the male and female counselors not getting along. And then hormones quickly kicked in and everything worked itself out. So there wasn't really a whole, as the film implies, summer of competition kind of thing. They just went like, oh, yeah, and we can make out now. Cool. Um, so that's how it, re but but for the sake of the, the film, I had to narrow, add a little narrative to it. So I had made a bigger conflict. But as you can see in the film, it's all exaggerated fun conflict anyway. Excellent. Now we now we can shoot it off to the rest of you gentlemen. Why why did you gentlemen um, both uh, Colin and Kevin here? Why do you guys want to do a film like this? Because this is a uh, this is one crazy film. <laughs> uh, again, uh, I think for both of us, again it was hormones. Yes, hormones, yeah. hormones, and of course Colin and I flirted with each other the whole shoot. Well, uh, that's what we do. Thankfully, there wasn't a rap party. <laughs> no, who knows, <laughs> you who knows what would have happened. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike sent the script. Uh, it looked like a lot of fun. Um, I also knew um, uh, Kevin was going to be a part of it, who I uh, adore. And I'm at the point now where I just want to do projects that are going to be fun. And um, also, I, I love working with new filmmakers because they still have hope. <laughs> 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 and there's an excitement there and everybody you know, works because it's not a big budget thing everybody sort of goes beyond what they're expected to do which is fun oh that's true i, I, I like the script when i read it i went to colin's house to read it because he got a copy of it. so i flew i flew into colin's house because i live in a different city and i read the script um with colin behind me going hurry Hurry up and go! And then uh, even with that in my ear, I like the script. And um, and I knew that Colin would be nicer on set because there'd be people watching. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> so he'd behave properly. Um, and I did like it. It did remind me of some Bill Murray movies. He's one of my idols. I'm talking like this because the others have heard me say stuff like this over and over. So I'm doing this kind of rhythm of speaking. And I thought it would be my chance to do a, at least a B version of, um, of Bill Murray. Ex excellent. Michael, when you actually brought these two gentlemen in, because these guys are notorious improvers, did you, did you basically uh, kind of threw that part of the script out and let them do what they do? Or did you want them to basically not try to improv? Uh, no, I definitely wanted them for that skill set. And I did a little producer's tactic where we shot for a whole week without them with just the main counselors kind of thing. And that ran more as like a almost like a workshop for the other actors to get into the groove of how the day would go and the pacing. And, you know, most of the actors would take five, six, seven takes to do each, each kind of line and stuff. And I made sure it was exactly how I wanted. So that when week two came around and that's when Colin and Kevin showed up, um, I now kind of had the machine going pretty well. So it allowed for us to do more time for improv. And, and sure enough, Colin and Kevin to their reputation uh, would nail the, the first, take every single time the first take was exactly how I wrote it in that and then I'd say now go nuts on the second take or the third take and they would go nuts and usually that was the goal that I would end up keeping in, in the final uh final cut Kevin and Colin what do you think about Michael's uh tactics for uh, improv and is this the first time you guys actually work together on the set we uh, have been in things together but uh Yes, things together, but not not in the same what? scene. I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, death. Uh, oh, death comes to town. You and I had a scene together. We had a scene together. <laughs> it was Very a whole memorable. day. You and I had a scene together. And I, I remember we had a lot of fun. Um, we were waiting for them to set up the lighting. I forget if we had fun when we shot it. <laughs> but I remember that we were you a, 
a dog. Oh, that was, vet. Yeah, was your vet. That's your uh, vet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat down. yeah. Oh, that is a very funny scene. Colin's very funny in that. Yeah, we had a lot of funny waiting. Uh, we had a lot of fun waiting for the lighting to set up. And I th- then we were professionals. I, yeah. I know people are thinking we're zany, but we're well. Uh, yes, Colin, I, I, we're professionals. I would say. Yeah, and it's it's nice on a set. A lot of times, um, writers are very uh, precious with their script, so they want it to be word for word. And the beauty of having the director who also wrote the script, um, he was very open to us um, just playing around. And I mean, we certainly kept the intention of the scene going because we're not insane. <laughs> because then we'd have to charge as script writers. Yeah. <laughs> so right. but it was nice to have that um, sort of freedom and uh, kind of throw the kids a little. What's, yeah. what's, what's the magic of doing improv anyways? I mean, uh, what what does it actually take with you guys? Because you for for both of you, it comes so how can you say natural? <laughs> well, Colin's your guy to to answer that. He's the the king of improv. Sometimes I cheat. Like when I got the script, I wrote little jokes that I call ad libs in the script, um, <laughs> but I always forget them by the time I get to set. <laughs> uh, I um, Colin's going to answer this question. He's the improvising king. Um, but uh, the, me and uh, all the other kids in the hall, or is it all the kids in the hall and I? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, um, we started in Second City workshops or theater sports workshops. So we were an improv troupe till we learned how to write. And so th- that's sort of the basis of everything we do. Even when we write scripts together, uh, we sort of write it in an improv-y kind of way, if that makes any sense. Colin, you answer the question, you're the king of improv. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, improvising, it's actually f- fairly simple. It's just because we have to do things that we don't do in real life, which is listen and accept people's ideas. <laughs> and basically, that's it. People make it harder than it is. So it's just being relaxed enough with yourself and the people you're working with just to, um, I mean, you know what the scene's about. You know what you're supposed to achieve in it. And it's just um, playing along with it. I mean, certainly it doesn't work out every time. But, you know, you can, you can find some uh, some great stuff just fooling around and actually working with. You have to actually commit with the people you're working with and you're supporting each other. It's it's a fun way to work. Yes. And then you learn tricks or rules that when you ad lib, you got to make sure you don't ad lib the, the cue line for the other actor. Or yeah. uh, if you ad lib instead of say the cue line, they'll just stare at you and then you hear Michael cut. <laughs> That's how he yelled cut. He was happy the other well, time. Yeah, he was very. Uh, Action very, uh, was very uh, nice, but cut was uh, a lot of hostility and cut. <laughs> Action. See? See? <laughs> hey, Michael, we're working with these two guys. Can, can you contain your laughter on set or, or, or is that uh, easy to do? <laughs> Um, it was, it was tough and it was, it, we had a, a fairly young crew. I mean, I had some keys that I brought down from Toronto, but we shot most of it in, in the Windsor area. Um, and I also work as a professor, a film professor at the University of Windsor. So about half the crew were, were film students <laughs> working on the set, which I didn't make too public to Colin and Kevin before offering them the role. Um, but they had to, you know, and that's, that's another reason why I had a full week of, of shooting before they showed up. Um, but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, after a lot of their takes, when we would yell cut, the laughter would roar right up from the, the crew that were watching. Um, and in and, and editing, I had to really do some nice L cuts, um, if you know that term or whatever, to kind of get the joke that either Colin or Kevin said, but before the laughter came up from the, the crew that was watching it. Now, Michael, one of the things about um, this movie, because it's, it's like the old two, those uh, 80s and 90s camp movies and so on. Was it difficult to basically trying to toe the line, um, trying to not to get to keep this as a kid's movie rather than an R-rated movie? Uh, for sure, for sure. Um, I mean, a, an original draft that I had more of a treatment back in, say, 2012, had it more of the R or X-rated Porky kind of version of it. Um, but then, you know, I wrote about 25 drafts before the one that you see that got shot. And then you're also looking at, you know, target audience and who's going to watch it and that kind of thing. So it slowly started to go towards more of the, the teenage comedy. Um, but I also really wanted to play the nostalgic factor of what those 80s and 90s comedies kind of were and what they did. And some people love that and would embrace it. And they're like, oh, it takes me back to like, like. Kevin said the Bill Murray comedies and stuff when they, 
and the posters are posturized and looked a certain way and the the people are out of touch with what 2020 is but there's been i've had i've had some people watch it and be like this seems so dated this seems like it's a genre of the past i'm like yeah that's what we were trying to do but i guess you didn't get that which is fine which is fine um but that's what i was trying to do anyway <laughs> kevin speaking of bill murray did you try to uh channel bill your inner bill murray for this film well yeah bill murray did it in a completely different way um because I, I wouldn't be able to do an impression of bill murray but yeah i was thinking um even though meatballs is his famous camp movie i was thinking about caddyshack the way that he he was the custodian they came, he came in and out and he has some elements of story but it was sort of more comedy relief with a little bit of story um michael's a good writer so uh the emphasis there was definitely story that i was involved in too which makes it more fun um but i guess i, uh, I was inspired by, by bill murray to be inspired uh, all the time sometimes you forget to be inspired I, uh, like i remember watching a scene a few years ago with the mark mckinney the kitchen hall all of a sudden he turned on and he and he didn't ad lib anything he read the script but he did it in a completely different way and as michael described um when the director yelled cut kelly macon um everybody laughed um and so every now and then i have to remember oh yeah get in a good mood relax and get inspired by not trying to be inspired. Like when you try to reach that magic um, moment of your, of your worried, but you're not worried at all. And that's when inspiration. Boy, I'm boring. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Another thing about inspiration. No. <laughs> Colin, I'm actually assuming you didn't model your, your character off of anybody. So you just went ahead and made it your own or did you model it off? That was an early Cary Grant choice I made. Uh, I don't think anyone saw that, but yeah, Bring no, baby, I'm, I saw it. Bring it. Oh, baby. thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, there's always in these types of movies, there's the beleaguered person in charge who can't. Uh, I think in Meatballs, it was Harvey Aikens who uh, was that sort of character. Uh, so it was sort of. Um, I've always been a big fan of character actors, uh, you know, from like like the Preston Sturgis movies with his uh, cast of, of great character actors. And that was what I always wanted to be. So it was, um, it was sort of an homage to everyone who's ever had that sort of character, the sort of trying to make things work and everyone is against him. I mean, not him personally, but just it seems that way. Excellent. Well, let, let me ask Ke Colin and then Kevin first. Working with the kids, that's one of the things that uh, – you know, in this industry, you never work with kids and animals, but you guys got to work with kids. And because of being notorious improvers, was it easy to work with these kids or do you have to restrain yourself? Well, I mean, at this age, everyone I'm working with is a kid, yes. <laughs> sadly. But uh, I worked yeah, with a kid, I, a kid of uh, the age of 47, a kid of 47 the other day. It was uh, like, they're, they're, they're all kids. <laughs> they're amazing. They, I mean, they were great. And they were, um, they certainly weren't thrown by any of the stuff I think we were throwing at them. And um, they were all professional. They knew their lines. Um, you know, part of you, um, I don't know what it's, I don't know what the right emotion is. It's not jealousy, but there's a part of them almost an envy of looking back and go, oh, I remember this part of where you're, you're kind of starting out and everything is exciting and you're really going for it all the time. And now it's like, oh, where's the craft <laughs> truck? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. not true. <laughs> but it, 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 it's, you get, I find you get inspired by working with young people. Like, it sort of keeps you on your toes. It seemed like these kids were uh, hardcore pros. Is that, is yeah. that not true, Michael? Is, were the leads? Is, it wasn't their first job, was it? Because they see not only could they act, I can't, they could act, but also they were professional on the set. Um, like Scott Thompson wouldn't be professional on the set. <laughs> so, so they seemed like they had worked before. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, all the, the eight co-leads had all, they were all actor members <laughs> and had worked quite a bit before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were the pros. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell us about your experience working with kids michael on um with them because uh because it seems like they're very professional did they also get to do improv or they basically stuck by the script they they stuck a little bit more by the script um when you're shooting an indie film and in the way that i'll storyboard and shot list it it's uh very economical in the sense that i'm only getting the camera's only on you for those two lines and we're not getting your reactions as much it's like 
cut. Now go to the next thing. And we're, we're getting a lot of setups done in one day. I think one day I had 56 different setups in one day in like a, in a 12 hour day, which is quite a bit. Um, so they were a bit more tight to the script. Um, but I, but I liked working with the, with the kids and I had, I had been a camp counselor for, for 10 odd years. So it kind of brought me back to that environment. Um, the big difference was if you picture every kid on set, and that includes the background performers, where sometimes you'd have a hundred of them, picture maybe a set of parents waiting under a pavilion, wondering what's going on kind of thing. So for every kid you saw, there's an aunt and an uncle or a mom and a dad kind of waiting for their, their, their kid to have their, their spotlight, which is, which is exciting, but you're, that kind of producing element was a bit more stressful, I'd say. Wow. Colin, Kevin, you guys are iconic uh, comedians, or at least to me. So when you were working with these kids, did they recognize you or did you just basically look at it and say, oh, so there are two funny comedians on the set? I have no, I mean, I, I knew um, one of the kids, Jesse. Uh, so he, he knew I was an icon. I don't <laughs> think anyone else did. <laughs> and I kept telling them, they just ignored me. They knew, I think they all knew Kevin. I, well, I introduced myself. Hi, Kevin McDonald Icon. Hi, hi, Kevin McDonald Icon. Uh, um, and I the name I tag really that. helped too. <laughs> yes, telling them you're an icon uh, sort of helps a lot. It's, but you know what I find, Michael brought this up, it's the parents <clears throat> of the kids that nervously are behind camera and laughing no matter what you say. Even if you're like saying, pass the salt, they'll laugh. And then, then they come up to me um, um, and do this. And uh, it's the parents <laughs> that, that sort of notice more. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so how, how, do, how does it feel that the parents recognize you on set? Obviously, that's a lot old, of love. Old, old, old. Yeah. <laughs> I've had the parents so many... are much younger than us. I, yeah, that's the, that's the worst part. Yeah. We're sort of the um, Mr. Rogers to all these kids' parents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Let, let, let's talk about the set itself. Uh, Michael, where, where, was this, uh, well, where was this filming location? Did you guys film it like at a summer camp somewhere? Yeah, th there was a bit of a challenge, or it should have been more of a challenge logistically to, to find a summer camp um, that was A, in working condition, and B, was available during that time. By default, most summer camps are, are busy during July and August. Um, so what we did is we shifted our shoot to mostly June with a little bit of July, and we were able to find a camp, uh, Quanah Sunshine Point Camp in Kingsville, which is about 45 minutes outside of Windsor, um, where we could rent out the whole facility for about uh, four or five weeks just before their camp season started. Um, and the other thing is you wanted to find a camp that looked like it was trapped more so in the 80s and 90s. And this camp that we found was just about to have some major renovations done on it and reworking. Um, or a facelift, so to speak. So we had to quickly say, can we rent it? And can you hold off on the facelift for a second kind of thing? So um, that worked out really well. Good story. Colin, Good Kevin. Story. I'm sure. Good story. Yeah. <laughs> Colin, Kevin, I'm sure uh, with, with the dozens of interviews you guys uh, have already been asked, does this actually bring any camp memories back um, by being on set? Kevin has some stories. <laughs> You want to leave for a few minutes? No, no, I get no. I like to hear. I always love hearing them. <laughs> over and over and over. I feel like I should rush it. It feels Just like we're about to do one man that. show. <laughs> feels, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for my one man show. Um, yes, two very quick ones that were disasters. As the other, you guys should tell the story. Um, when I was a Cub Scout, um, I, uh, that disaster was that we put the tent on. I didn't know that I had allergies. I found out that night because we put the tent on everything I was allergic to, uh, like hay and dust and such. Um, and um, so cut to a woo woo, a siren bringing me back. And then years later, <laughs> I was 16 and I went, um, sorry that I'm saying this story again. Um, with, uh, I still remember their names, Ing Ann Goping, George Ganyu, Lorenzo something. Oh, this is new. This part's oh, new. Oh, there, see I've added a little something, their names. Wasn't that good? Woohoo! I forget Lorenzo's last name. And they were, for some reason, I was friends with math geniuses. And they were matching, and our first night in the tent, uh, raccoons ate all our food that we brought. So because they, they were math geniuses, they, um, they, they had measured, they, they brought rulers, I don't know why. And they, uh, they got this levy system where they, uh, we bought new food and we pulled it up. Um, uh, and so it was hanging in the tree and they were proud of that. 
um, we cut to another siren. Woo! <laughs> it wasn't really a siren. My mother came uh, and she pulled me out early um, because she, uh, we had found out that I failed, ironically, math. So I had to go to math school. So camping has never worked out on me. <laughs> Kevin McDonald, grade seven. Thank you. I never get tired of those stories. I never had a camp experience. Uh, my daughter did, and um, she had great experiences. And it's still her best friends are people from those camps. And um, she was a counselor for years. And I, I really, when I would watch her in that environment with those people, I really felt like I missed something. And now I feel there should be a camp for seniors. Yes. A nice senior <laughs> camp. If somebody <laughs> you got it. In on that. <laughs> I think you just earned your co-writing credit for the uh, sequel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Boys and girls, the next generation. Old men versus old women. <laughs> I'd buy a ticket. <laughs> Let's write it. So, so with with the few days on set, did Michael put you guys up in on on a site on camp, or did he put you guys in a motel nearby? Motel nearby. Yeah, we I would have got allergies. It would have ruined his film. <laughs> Colin, you were in the oh. same motel. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that would be lovely, of course, being in the camp with everybody else and building that team spirit. But uh, <laughs> Kevin and I don't need team spirit. We don't need team spirit. We're you too know. old for team spirit. Yeah, we just need a place with room service. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I don't think they had it, but it would have been nice. <laughs> but there was a restaurant close by. <laughs> there was a restaurant close by. I ran uh, an hour and a half every morning. Uh, who cares? Oh, I do. All I was going to say was, and I'd run to a store and buy food and bring it back. Who cares? I'm so sorry. You ran a mile and a half to the store and then ran back? Did I say a mile and a half? What a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I try to run a mile every day, um, and it took an hour and a half because I did 45 minutes there. Uh, no, I did 20 minutes there, and then it was an hour and a half back because uh, I because I was walking carrying groceries. <laughs> Michael, did did for for the kids themselves um, were they put up on like a motel hotel, or did you want to create like a synergy by putting them on in a camp? Yeah, um, the the eight leads that were all around twenty years old, uh, the the co counselors, they all stayed on site in a cabin type situation, and again, it was it was me tricking them, saying this is a great way for you guys to bond and 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 kind of get along, which they which they did, um, but it was also an economic advantage of of housing them at this place that we also rented. Um, but yeah, with Colin and Kevin, I didn't want them to get along with the kids because they're more the antagonist force. So that was also strategy. Oh, Let's put them in a real cushy oh. uh, hotel and then right. that way they'll wake up and, you know, be really upset at the people they didn't bond with. So We still would have been antagonistic to them if we had a hotel with room service. <laughs> Just Again, saying. the sequel. All right. Yes. <laughs> Sound, sounds great. Can't wait till, uh, to see if the sequel actually happens. <laughs> One, one of the things that, uh, that I want to take note was from the movie itself. What in the world is a paddle axe and how do you use that? Anyone can answer that. <laughs> oh, man. The, the paddle axe, well, I, I pulled it from a lot of camps do have that Lumberman versus Voyager competition. Um, and that is, I think, one year that I was one of the co-captains for the Lumberman and Voyager we created a paddle axe as a, as a trophy or whatever. So it was a direct pull from that. Um, but yeah, it was just, you needed the arbitrary MacGuffin of, of what they were trying to win. So it was the, the paddle axe that was up there and, and spray painted gold kind of thing. MacGuffin, a term made famous by Alfred Hitchcock. He's dead. <laughs> All those facts are totally true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, let, let me start wrapping things up with, uh, with uh, all of you gentlemen. So, uh, Michael, is there really a possibility of a sequel if this, uh, this film becomes successful? I mean, because a lot of camp films do come up with a lot of sequels in other films. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, it, I guess it all depends on audience reception and, and reaction and if there's a demand. I'm, I don't think anyone's going to force a sequel if no if no one wants it um but a lot of a lot of these camp films like you said they'll get quote unquote cult status later on even wet hot american summer didn't perform well when it first came out and then it was 10 years later camp people spread it and then it ended up being multiple sequels on netflix so i'm not saying we're in that league or that or that big or whatever but yeah if there was a if there was a 
a strong enough reaction in an audience and people wanted to do it. I'd, I'd love to explore the world again and there's a lot more material there, but um, I guess that's a wait and see. Colin, another season of who, Whose Line Is It Anyways? How is this show so enduring for all these years? I mean, people just still laugh at it. Yeah, I don't get it. I, I Well, the network loves it because it's the cheapest show on television. It's uh, We do two weekends and uh, we actually, our, our new season, I think started last week, we got renewed for another season and we haven't filmed in like two years. But they just have so many extra bits. They're just shoving them into a, a, a new season. I'm trying to work on a way where I don't actually show up for anything, but still my work gets out there. I, I'm, it's hard. I'm still trying to figure out some of the, the details. Do you wear the same clothes for every episode so they can put any any game you guys play into any episode? No. Uh, our taping usually goes three to four hours. So they can get four to five shows from that taping. Wow. So there will be, you'll see a stretch where, oh boy, he's wearing that shirt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll be the dream job, not to show up to work and get paid. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, obviously you guys are bringing kids in the hall back um, for, um, with, with Amazon. How is that actually going? And how does it feel reuniting with the, your old troop? Uh, well, sadly, we're always together, even if it's emails, because... Uh, the business of Kids in the Hall, which is in debt, uh, but the business of Kids in the Hall keeps, keeps us together and we try to tour every few years. So it's no, bi it's no big, oh my God, Mark, how are you? Because we're always um, uh, like on the phone or texting each other. But uh, to do the show again, it was very exciting, um, uh, very quickly, because um, you probably, Colin's probably heard this a lot. Uh, we wrote it. Um, uh, the pandemic happened during the beginning of the writing process, but we still managed to write it. Uh, we're old and vulnerable, so we weren't allowed to shoot it. Um, and now we're going to shoot it. Um, they keep changing it, but now the, the for sure for sure is um, May, June, and July. Um, we're still old and vulnerable, uh, <laughs> but we're going to do it. Uh, I doubt we'll have vaccines by then, but there you go. That's the plan anyway. Is there still shooting in Toronto? Or the lockdown affected that? Colin, I, do you know? I, I think there's still shooting happening, yeah. Okay. But yeah, that could change in a day or two. There you go. Yeah. We're very excited, uh, but get ready to be disappointed because how could it be as good as the 90s show we're old now? <laughs> There's the tagline. There's the tagline. <laughs> Not as good as the 90s show. We should do that. We should. Okay, Colin, I'll give you credit. I, I'm gonna All right, please. <laughs> Excellent, gentlemen. One, one, one last question. Because the world is actually going bonkers and crazy right now. I want to know from all three of you, how are you staying creative and sane while, while the world is burning like right now? Yeah, I, I've been really lucky in that uh, the guy I've been touring with, Brad Sherwood and I have been doing virtual shows, me from my basement, him from a room in Las Vegas. And we have this great tech team who's worked it out. So it looks like we're in the same room. We can go to, into audiences, living rooms and get suggestions from them and improvise. So that's been good. Because uh, otherwise, I think I would have gone a little uh, crazy not being able to do anything at all. Because I keep thinking, oh, I should write. But then I realized, oh, no, I'm too lazy. <laughs> so <laughs> this has been a nice outlet. Oh, you're right. And with Michael, I'm middle. Uh, I'm writing, um, even though I'm lazy, I'm writing. Uh, but because I'm, <laughs> I'm lazy, I'm writing, people think it's the opposite, that I'm a workaholic. I'm writing four different things, but it's because I'm lazy. Um, because then I get stuck in one thing and I move to the next thing. Uh, you actually can cure your laziness by working harder. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Michael? Yeah, I, I, I use Kevin's strategy as well. If you have a multiple things going and you get tired or lazy with one, you just jump to another. So, yeah, I guess the the pandemic this time has just been doing way more uh, development and pre-production and writing. So normally you're working on one or two projects at a time and you hope that when, for me anyway, when the summer comes around, you get to shoot something. Um, but now I've built up three or four projects that I'm, I'm ready to go as soon as the world allows it. Oh. Excellent. Well, gentlemen... Boys versus Girls is a hilarious movie, and and you know you know what I actually watched it twice. Can't wait to to see if there there is going to be you know an old old people's camp uh, as as a sequel. That that would be fairly interesting. 
fairly. Yeah, we have to film within the next 20 years, though, because I, I don't know how much more time yeah. I have. <laughs> 12 years for oh. me. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Hey, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Next thank time. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.